All right guys, welcome back to the Cape May County's virtual school. My name is Laura and today we are in the flamingo yard. There are no flamingos right now, but they will be getting out soon. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple different species that we have in here. Uh, the first two I'm gonna talk about is our, little, our old girl, our old gal in the pond. Uh, she is a black neck swan, hence the name, a black neck. So if you look at her neck, it looks a little different than some of our waterfowl species that, in, that are in here. And that's because her neck is built for eating food. So that's a good adaptation. So when she's in the water, she'll stick her neck really down far underneath and pick up all the food that they want, which is usually vegetation, or sometimes they'll get some insect larvae in there as well. So she has a really dense body, so that doesn't allow her to really dive. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit with our waterfowl species. Over on the back over here, we have a bar-headed goose. So the reason why they get their name is because they have two bars on the back of their neck. It's two like little black lines. These guys are really cool. Um, so they're one of the highest flying bird species in the world. They're ranked, I think about three, third on the list. And they've actually been known to be seen flying over Mount Everest. Uh, but most of their time they fly over it for um, migration or breeding and they i think they are rank about 29,000 feet so that's really high and that's because they're they're able to fly at such a um, high distance is because of their really strong lung capacity so these guys are really cool and right now obviously we're going to talk about his diet so he's eating some grasses right now so he is mainly going to eat grass sometimes insects but they're really just vegetation um, all right guys if you look around we have a couple different waterfowl in here uh, currently right now in the water, this is kind of close to me, these guys are uh, common mallards. Um, they don't look like the typical mallards right now because they don't have their typical breeding plumage. So it usually has like a green head. Um, we have a good example right now off to the left of the swan. So that's a very typical color during breeding. These guys are just kind of out of it right now. They look just normal and they're both boys. So they'll show that different um, dimorphic color that we were talking about in the aviary. So males and female uh, mallards will look very differently. So the females will look more brown and the males will have a very bright green head. So we also have a couple hybrid uh, ducks in here as well. We have two really close right here and then we have two others in the pond right now. These guys are also considered um, dabbler ducks. So we're gonna talk, that's what I was referring to before. So waterfowls are um, kind of broken up in two groups. So dabbler ducks means that they kind of just dabble, dabble their bill in the water or in the ground looking for their food. And diver ducks are more compact. They're almost like little submarines. They'll kind of tighten in their feathers really tight and then to try to get all that oxygen out of their feathers so that way they don't float. And then they dive for their food. So when we were talking about the flamingos just a couple days ago, we were talking about filtering from their bills. So these guys also do the same thing. So what they'll do is they'll take in a little bit of water or maybe some mud and they'll kind of filter out the, the water and eat their food. And these guys usually will eat worms, insects, vegetation. They pretty much go for anything. You probably have seen these mallards out in your backyard and that's because these guys are very common. They can be found throughout the United States. There's a northern group of uh, mallards that live mostly in Alaska and Canada, but during the winter months, they'll come down in uh, warmer climates. And when we were talking about plumage before, these guys go through what's called a molt every single year, and they usually do two molts. So what this means is that they shed their kind of worn feathers, and then they get new ones in. The only downside about this is that when they molt, they're very vulnerable to predators, this kind of weighs them down. They can't really fly very well because their new feathers are coming in. So it takes a lot of, out of the birds as well. They kind of need to have a lot of food in their system to be able to produce these brand new feathers. And these guys can live about five to 10 years of age, but of course in human care, they can live a lot longer. Well, there's not as many predators and we give them as much food as they possibly need and they have the medical care right on staff. All right guys, right now I'm gonna be doing a scale training with some of our ducks. 
You may have seen this in other videos as well. This is really important. That way we know exactly how much food they're eating and it's good for their health. So my two superstars are actually these guys here, the hybrid male and female. And I'm, right now I'm gonna be giving them some um, mealworms. I'm gonna see if I can get um, one of them up. Yeah, get them. Good job. And we see we got some thieves over here on the left. And we never force them on the scale. We never pick them up and drop them on the scale. It's really just on their choice only. always want to get on a scale and that's totally fine but it looks like we got her up so that's good good job <laughs> they love their bugs obviously you can see some disagreement between them <laughs> but essentially that's what we do when it comes to scale training uh, these guys I've just started recently doing so they're very new to it um, so a lot of the times they think that it's their turn when it's really not um, and that's just uh, gonna be a work in progress hi guys I'm zookeeper Kim I am here today with you in our uh, swan yard this is where some of our waterfowl live you just met some of our waterfowl in the flamingo yard with zookeeper Laura. And now I'm gonna show you some of the cool animals that we have out here in the zoo. Um, so right over here, oh, right behind me, sorry. Um, this back in the distance a little bit, they're a little shy, are our ruddy shell ducks. We have two ruddy shell ducks here in this yard. They um, were dropped off as a private donation back in 2004. So they're at least 16 years old. They're pretty old um, and they kind of just hang out in this yard with our swans and then our swans are coming over to us now and they're a little noisy so I'll introduce you to them in just a minute but this is Joffrey and Loris. There are two black swans. Black swans are native to Australia and actually found quite um, popular over the world because of making people thinking they're making good pets. Um, they actually have feral populations in different countries. Um, they are very aggressive, known to being very aggressive, especially during nesting season. So they definitely don't make the best pets. Um, we're gonna see if they'll come over and we'll feed them here. Hi guys! You can come over. Uh, so these guys are black swans, like I said, native to Australia, and they are very noisy. <laughs> we also have mute swans, which are really quiet. Um, uh, we used to have mute swans at the zoo, so it's quite a big difference between the mute swans and the black swans. Um, that honking sound, they're just kind of trying to figure out who I am and if I'm here to feed them or to try to take over their territory. You can see him kind of trucking on over to us. Do you guys want some of this? So at the zoo, we feed them um, a mix. This is a special duck chow with lots of vitamins in it. And then we give them some corn as well, some cracked corn. We'll see if they'll uh, eat for you guys. Probably not, because they're angry that I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, in the wild, they'll eat a lot of aquatic plants, and we do provide them with aquatic plants in the summer here at the zoo. Um, but we also offer this diet year-round, which they're much less interested in um, as it gets warmer because they are finding their own food in this yard. All right, so um, you guys met the Ruddy Shell Ducks too. Just a little bit about them. There's one over there. Um, they are um, from uh, uh, Europe, um, India, Asia, Western Asia. You can find them um, in quite a large range. Oh, you're gonna actually come over? Um, over, oh, um, over on the other world, of course, they're a duck. Um, shell duck is actually, um, has nothing to do with shells, like seashells. Um, shell duck is uh, uh, based on a word that um, means that they are pied. So if you watched the eagle video yesterday, uh, you learned a little bit about what it meant to be pied, having dark colors and light colors right next to each other. A uh, common shell duck has a lot of those splotches of the dark colors and light colors, which they think is where they get that name. 
Um, so this guy's not so much. Their um, scientific name actually um, means rusty. So you can see they have that rusty coloration. All right, so I said that the swans are uh, known for being aggressive, especially during nesting season, but I really want the opportunity to show you guys their cool nest that they built this year. Even though they're both males, they will still make a nest and take care of it. In the wild, both males and females will incubate the eggs, which means they'll both take turns sitting on them and taking care of them. So we're going to, James Bond style, go over and check out their nest. Now, if you see a swan nest in the wild, you definitely wouldn't want to go check it out because like I said, they can be aggressive. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Um, they built this themselves. We didn't build it for them. They collect sticks and um, pieces of the trees and they kind of collect it all and make this big beautiful nest. Of course being males they have no eggs but they'll still sometimes protect it of course today. Because we James bonded over here they uh, didn't even see us coming. They didn't come over and bother us at all so we got pretty lucky there. Um, other animals that frequent this yard, if you guys come visit, especially in the winter, you're going to see lots of mallard ducks. You can see some in the pond right now. Um, lots of mallards uh, year round, but especially in the winter, this pond will get covered in mallards. We also get a lot of springtime visitors. So right now we have um, a lot of wood ducks, um, American widgeons, different kinds of duck species will stop in this yard. And uh, we also have a lot of egrets. So we've had a great egret that's been hanging out here. Um, there's a snowy egret, his name is George. He comes every year, and um, or at least I like to think that it's him every year. And I talk to him and he fishes in the pond. Um, and then we have a lot of turtles. You guys probably see them basking out on the side. Not today, because it's not sunny and it's a little chilly, but the turtles will come bask. And those are aquatic turtles. Um, lots of painted turtles, red-eared sliders, and red-bellied turtles. Um, they will spend most of the time in the water. They'll hibernate on the bottom of the pond and come up on warm, sunny days and then all summer long, and you'll see them out basking on the logs or on the sides of the pond. Um, another animal we have in here a lot are water snakes. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't realize that there's a lot of native snakes that are pretty harmless here in New Jersey, and they mind their own business, hang out in this yard, um, and you can often see them basking in the sun. We have a big female that likes to hang out on the island back there. And sometimes when you're walking over the bridge, you can look down and see her um, basking and soaking up that sun. So yeah, lots of cool animal species, lots of uh, wild birds come and, and hang out in the trees here too. Um, our crows like to come down and eat the turtle eggs once the turtles lay eggs. They'll bury them in a little hole and the crows will watch, they're really smart. Once the turtle walks away from their little nest that they made underground, the crows will come down and they'll dig up the eggs and eat them. So we have a nice uh, ecosystem. So um, our challenge for you guys today, Zoo School, is to make your own nest. We want to see what comfy place you can make a nest or a fort or some place where you might want to sit down and get comfortable and read a book. Thanks for joining us.